Awesome Strategy Wednesday. My name is Yaroslav and I welcome you all to today's webinar. If you could please write me in chat that you can hear me and you can see me and we'll get started because we have a lot of interesting information. A lot of things have happened over the past 24 hours and moreover we'll talk about what is to happen in the following 24 and as promised I have a workable strategy. It's very simple but each and every week we'll have a new strategy for you guys that is that has been back tested and that works and that will bring you profits. So let me just have a look in chat where we are at. Hey, Thon. Hello, Hero. Pashkant, I welcome you. Sakib, hello. And Tricky Tricky Monks, what's up? AC, Hero, what does that mean? Do you see me, guys? Can you hear me? Let's get the show on the road. Awesome, Christine. Thank you. Good to have you with us. All right. So on my screen, I have the S&P 500. Now, this has been a tricky week. I would even say two weeks because still the S&P cannot pick a direction. Uh, this kind of trading, uh, everybody loses money here. Everybody. No algorithm knows how to make uh make profits in this kind of trading scenario and we still uh, cannot pick a direction. So uh, I want to show you guys a neat little trick that you can do on the Olymp Trade platform. Here you see on the left hand side I have a sentiment indicator. Now this is my S&P 500 chart, daily chart. Let's zoom it out a little bit. And this shows out of these 22,000 traders, how many of them are long and how many of them are short. Now, this is just one sentiment indicator. I took a look uh, at different sentiment indicators from different sources today, and I can tell you retail traders, like people sitting at home, they uh, believe that this is a good selling opportunity. They're short and basically what they're doing, there's no fundamentals and there's no technicals, more, more importantly, that tell us it's time to sell. So basically we're picking tops, we're catching knives, not a good idea. I would recommend everybody just to hang tight, not trade the S&P, but I will give you a lot of insight into what is happening and how it compares to the rest of the world. It's interesting stuff, guys, and more importantly, you can make money on it. So short interest and in sentiment basically means uh, what everybody uh, has decided. Here you can read it's uh, basically the, the average of what everybody uh, has decided. Right now everybody in our platform has decided to go long. The US stock exchange is open. We've got <clears throat> a gap up and yet we are moving downwards. So again, a lot of uh, instability. I want to show you a graph of where exactly Americans are investing. There's a really uh, neat formula. We can divide the SPX by the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now imagine this as a as a currency pair. So on the left side, we have uh, the S&P 500 and on the right side we have the Dow Jones and that's 30 blue chip stocks. Remember the S&P 500 is 500 stocks whereas the Dow Jones is only 30 stocks. So we take a look at this graph and what do we see? So because the graph is leaning uh, to the right, it's going downward. That means American investors are investing, uh, excuse me, not only American investors, but worldwide investors are investing in the most high quality stocks, the top 30, the creme de la creme of the American stock market. And that huge gap down is exactly what that means. Out of all the stocks in the S&P 500, the ones that are getting the most action are the ones from the Dow Jones. Let's have a look at it. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, it looks kind of the same as the S&P, but we know that that is where investors are putting their money. So everything that is not the Dow Jones, we can see that it has a more downward direction. Now, another interesting graphic that we can show you, the Shanghai Composite uh, by the S&P. This is important to us. Again, on the left side, we have China's economy. The Shanghai Composite is China's blue chip stocks. 
And on the right side, we have the S&P 500. So it's been a rough climb, but we can see China starting to recover uh, towards the end of last year. And they're still kind of going through that phase where you have not made new lows. So China is on a recovery route compared to the United States. Now, uh, one interesting economic event that came out yesterday that may have missed your sight is uh, here we are, the Consumer Confidence Report. This is an important indicator, uh, giving us an understanding of how uh, confident consumer spending is. Uh, let's take a look closely at the graph. Uh, this is what it looks like. It looks pretty bullish, but let's consider the last uh, the last falls. Like here, we can take a look in 2017, this top graph, 124 and 119. So there was a five, uh, five point difference in consumer confidence. This fall was six points, and the previous one was even more than that, was a whole whopping 10 points. This is uh, a reversal. This is a turnaround of uh, a lagging indicator in the United States. So this had a huge effect on the uh, DXY, which is the, uh, the dollar index. So really something to keep in mind. And later on today, we have the FOMC report. Uh, basically, the central bank of the United States is gonna give a statement um, <clears throat> It's not going to give us a direction, but what it will do is it will give us an understanding of uh, how many times we are going to be raising interest rates. As of right now, the the consensus, there's actually a, a stock that you can change. It's a futures uh that, that it's a futures contract that you can actually uh participate in that predicts how how often the Fed will raise interest rates this year. Right now, as of as of yet, it's leaning close to zero. So tonight, uh, we'll have a clearer understanding of where we can expect the dollar to go and how the, the Fed is gonna behave itself. So uh, I'm really keen on listening to the press conference because they're gonna give some guidance and speaking about guidance, let's talk about earnings a little bit. Remember yesterday I told you that the best indicator that we have this week is not, you know, the FOMC meeting is not GDP, but it is earnings from Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Boeing, those companies, they're in the Dow Jones, and they are really the ones that tell us where price is going. If you didn't know, the stock market itself is actually a leading indicator. You know, like here we have uh, economic indicators. Well, some of them are lagging, some of them are leading, like currency prices. Currency prices are lagging indicators, whereas the stock market is leading. So what did we have yesterday, here on yesterday? By the way, for those of you that don't know, uh, briefing.com is where you can get a lot of your economic data from. I really enjoy that site. And actually, you guys can go ahead and uh, sign up to my channel, uh, my personal YouTube channel. Uh, and I have a lot of information, mainly of, of things that we talk about here today. Uh, so, hey, I'm Andil. Nuosia Martin, nice to see you guys. Tony, hello, welcome. So, Apple, Apple gave earnings after the market and they beat expectations by one penny. But if we take a look at their stock, actually, uh, they gapped up on earnings and then went straight down. And the reason for that being is guidance. The guidance that they gave us was pretty, uh, was it wasn't bad, but basically they said that purchases are slowing down, production is getting shut down and they expect uh, less earnings than last year. So that is one of the indicators uh, for us today. Now, today we have a whole list of very big companies uh, reporting. Uh, number one is Microsoft. So here we have Alibaba already reported. They're doing good. They are uh, on track with Amazon. Now, Amazon is not only a, uh, a retail 
company, but they are also a tech company, and Alibaba is is right there with them. So. For those of you that are seeking long-term investments, I would definitely recommend both of these because they are the, the top of, of, of human interaction currently right now on the planet. So Boeing also reported great earnings for Boeing. This is another one of my favorites uh, that I watch and we have it on our Limp Trade platform as well. Here we can take a look at how, how they're performing. So that gap up that we see that is uh, beautiful earnings on their part. And their picture is a little bit different because the guidance that they gave was positive. So they gapped up, dropped down, but then over the course of the few hours that the stock market has been open, they made back all of their losses. So it was very much a V pattern, which signifies for us that it's a, it's a good buying opportunity. But the most important ones that I wanted to show you guys today would be Microsoft, definitely something to keep an eye out. Now, for those of you that are trading uh, the, the stock itself, um, definitely could be a good idea to get in before the action because they are uh, obviously the biggest company in the world by capitalization. Uh, they have changed a lot of their services. They have made a lot of client-based uh, uh, subscription services, which uh, provides them monthly monthly income. Uh, very smart on their part. Tesla, Tesla was my favorite. I really, my goal is to, to buy a Tesla. And Facebook. So Facebook and Microsoft are really the companies that you want to pay attention to because they will give you an understanding of where the tech sector is going. And as you know, the tech sector since 2009 has been the best investment opportunity in the whole entire world. Okay, so keep that in mind, you guys. Uh, Friday, we have non-farms. Oh, actually, Amazon is also on Thursday. I think they're already... They already. Do, 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 do. Ah, it's on Thursday. So tomorrow we have Amazon. <clears throat> After the market close, perfect. Amazon. And I will give you guys a tip. If uh, Alibaba did great I would buy Amazon stock right now let's check if uh, if we have Amazon so unfortunately it doesn't look like we have Amazon on our list but definitely something to look forward to uh, but what we do have on our list is the Nasdaq and those stocks that we just named are all top Nasdaq stocks so we could start to see a reversal. I wouldn't enter until we beat this level of 6817, 6,817. After we push past that level, and in fact, we have the 2000 exponential moving average, uh, we will get a uh, retracement from that level, but afterwards, uh, Considering that the stocks continue to move upwards, this is a great speculative opportunity for you guys. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Brexit. So last night, if you guys haven't heard, uh, May's Brexit deal went on to vote in Parliament and basically they denied the motion. So that document was supposed to go to the European Union saying, hello, uh, this is our proposition from Great Britain. This is what we would like to see. This is what we'd like to agree upon. Their own government said that, you know, we don't agree with a lot of these things. Now, the two things that they did agree on was uh, a no deal uh, Brexit. So if, if need be, the British government is ready for a hard Brexit. And the second was uh, considering Irish borders. So uh, that was one of the huge issues that um, the European Union had was that Ireland deserves its own border uh, 
And of course, Great Britain was very furiously against that. Those two things still stand. So if before we talked about the probabilities of a hard Brexit very slim, now due to last night's uh, vote, that probability has risen dramatically. So let's take a look at the effect that it had on on the Great Britain pound. Now the effect was very minimal. As you guys can see, we, we dropped down and then all day today, the, the currency has been growing. But you see, still the day finishes with a shooting star. Now, a lot of these uh, great technical trade ideas uh, we will go over during these webinars. So Awesome Strategy Wednesdays are exactly for you to learn solid, working, money-making strategies. And at the end of the, the webinar, once we finish technical and fundamental analysis, I'm going to give you guys one of those strategies so all week you can practice and make that money. Uh, I want to take a look at a few more currencies. So the Australian dollar has not shown us uh, a trading opportunity. It, it was the best carry currency of 2017. <clears throat> uh, right now it has uh, fallen out of that position. As you can see all year, it's been losing interest. Um, right here, there are no real um, opportunities, but we have consumer inflation coming up on the economic calendar. And for us, what that means that we can find trade opportunities. Uh, and I recommend looking at things with the Canadian dollars. So let's take a look at that. Uh, there's more of a trade opportunity with the Canadian dollar. If we look at it, it is it has broken through the upward channel. It has retraced back to that that level and fallen down. Today was a beautiful day. For those who listened uh, to my trade ideas all week, I, every day I was selling sell the Canadian dollar. You guys can look back in history. We have all of our webinars recorded. Uh, the Canadian dollar has come up and today was a great opportunity for a short. We will see how oil reacts. Let's take a look at that now. Uh, see how we are uh, just, just you know, you know, really, uh, itching to get over this level of 5430. Uh, once we do and we have a confirmation of a move upward, start you know going long Canadian dollar, uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar going short, um, US dollar, Canadian dollar going short. It's a great opportunity. Another opportunity I wanted to discuss with you guys today is the Mexican dollar, the Mexican peso, excuse me. The reason for that being is, let's look at the economic calendar. The Mexican government is going to be reporting, so not today, I think tomorrow. Here we are. No fiscal balance. That's not what we're looking for. Mexico are, uh, is reporting GDP figures at the end of the week, I believe. Manufacturing PMI. CFTC. Hmm. When did that happen? Uh, it's really interesting for me to see because it is in a perfect position. I think they're already reported. Look at this beautiful trade. So look at this. They remind me of the pound in the way that it is very, mm, it moves very cyclically, very uh, geometrically. And right now, this is when, when we were down here at the bottom, these were great chances to get in long on the Mexican dollar. And I want to find for you when exactly their GDP was. Here, let's go this way. Clear. And Mexico. Orale. Arriba, arriba. Perfect. GDP figures today already came out. 1.8, 0 0.3. So not so good. That's why it's going up. Altogether, uh, that means that the Mexican economy has slowed down. As I was reading reports from top Wall Street firms for 2019, uh, Mexico was one of the underperforming emerging markets. In general, for 2019, emerging markets are going to be one of the top uh, investment opportunities. We'll see how uh, the trade wars play out because a lot of emerging markets are tied in with the Chinese economy. 
but as you can see, Chinese economy has been showing a, a turnaround. Well, here in Mexico, we see that they have not been doing so good as of last year. That's year on year growth of 1.8. That is not uh, very uh, interesting. And even if we look at uh, the quarterly growth, you know, that will amount to uh, 1.2, 1.1 not very good uh, growth at all. So for those of you looking for trade ideas, I would recommend looking at the Mexican peso and shorting it. Now let's take a look at my beauty gold. This is our uh, go to instrument in terms of all of this fiscal, political and financial instability. Um, the trade that I recommended for this breakout worked perfectly. For those of you that got in uh, even on this retracement, congratulations. Uh, I want to keep an eye on gold right now. There is no uh, entrance opportunity. Please do not enter at, uh, I mean, you can do what you like, but my recommendation is that you don't enter uh, in the current state that it's in because there's no clear picture. Uh, it's kind of like gambling, but this is the most important asset for, uh, for safety and for a risk off trade. Uh, and uh, oil we took a look at, perfect. Now, uh, so earnings, Amazon for Thursday. Let me teach you the trading strategy that I wanted to get across to you guys. All right, so these strategies are very simple. They're targeted towards our newest clients, but I use them to this day. And when you use them enough, you see them like that. On the graph, they're so easy to spot. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about first when the best time to trade is. Now, I know a lot of our webinars coincide with the best times to trade because we uh, will also be trading live. But the best times to trade are when stock uh, when stock exchanges are open at the same time. So for those of you in the Asian Pacific region, when Sydney, Tokyo, and London are open at the same time, best time to trade and for those on the european continent uh, london and new york overlapping is the best place to trade it has the highest volatility highest volume best uh, places to trade now <clears throat> i want to talk a little bit about time frames now despite the fact that our broker has uh, a minute time frame it is very unpredictable it is a lot like gambling a lot of high frequency trading goes on just a lot of uh, automated algorithmic trading goes on. It doesn't even need to be high, high speed to catch disbalances in the market. Because when the market was first, uh, was first created, people like you and you and I, uh, we made money on the disbalances on, on mistakes within the market. Well, smart people have created different algorithms to get rid of the, the imperfections of the market. Of course, they still exist. That's why uh, we still make money in the market. But uh, the return rate is very small. It is very hard to make money. So I personally recommend going up to the 15 minute and 30 minute time frame because in that time you can capture a reversal you can capture a significant move and you can let the market play out. Remember, we not only take price into consideration, but we also take time into consideration. And time is that wonderful factor that a lot of new traders neglect. So please keep that in mind. Uh, 30 minutes, I think is the best because we have time for fundamental and technical analysis to play out. Now, the first strategy that we'll go over today is um, it, it has to deal with re, uh, retracements from support and resistance levels. So basically, to, to show you very simply in a picture, uh, we, we reach a certain point of resistance in this case. And once we do, we have uh, a, a reversal, one candle, two candles when right here when that third candle closes that's when you open up a sell position that's when you open up a put option and it it would be best 
if this candle, uh, sorry, if this red candle engulfed this green candle completely, if it was bigger than the other candle, that would be optimal. But nonetheless, uh, this sign of reversal gives us a chance in a 30 minute or 15 minute time frame to make uh, a few extra dollars. Now you can even drop down to a five minute time frame just in case um, this was a false flag or a false reversal. So the key, uh, key element is that uh, use short chart analysis. Once we reach a support level, there's going to be a quick movement backwards. It's called a fade. The technical term for this is a fade. Very popular. A lot of my professional friends uh, that trade in funds, they fade everything. So a, a fade is the number one uh, move that funds use and that's why I bring it forward to you today. Uh, the only thing that I want you to keep in mind is that it is not good for volatile markets. So during news events, during like the FOMC, during central banks uh, speeches, not a very good time because price goes crazy. Uh, it's best to open up uh, a forex position and then close it off when it's in positive territory. So this can be a double red strategy or double green strategy. If we hit a support level at the bottom somewhere, uh, it will be uh, the same thing except in reverse, okay? So that's it for today's lecture. I want to know if you guys have some more questions for me. Uh, next week, we'll go over another trade strategy that will earn you more money. Uh, I'm going to have a look at chat to see if you guys have uh, any questions for me. All right. Why is it that you guys two-way factor authentication takes time to come yet to log in for my account since? Martin, uh, I'm not too sure. I, I don't know a lot about the technical side of what the, the brokerage, um, how their authentication works. Uh, two, two factor authentication is uh, for your support and it's mandatory uh, by the central bank. Um, any financial organization needs to have that in order to prevent money laundering. So please uh, don't get mad, you know, uh, just give it some time. Again, patience is a great virtue, especially in trading. Uh, if you can develop pa patience as a trader, um, that strategy that I just showed you where we meet a certain level, perfect that we talk about that. Let's find that strategy in real life. So give me right now in chat, write me a, um, an asset that we have on the Olymp Trade platform and I'll have a look at it and I'll see if you guys have any other uh, questions. Steven, uh, what exactly do you need help with? If you can write that out in chat, that's what I'm here to do, I'm here to help you guys out. So cool beans, nice tips. A Suresh, I'm glad that helped you. Good. Big Momo, good to have you with us. All right, since you guys are taking your time, dollar ruble, let's check it out. So let us draw in some, <clears throat> first of all, let's drop down to the 15 minute time frame. Nothing good here. Perfect, so something like this. Check this out, you guys, draw a horizontal line. Here we have a level. Now, if we zoom out, this level has actually been one, two, three times used by us. Uh, so from these two points, we know that there's a level. You can even do it like this. As we come down and touch this point, here we have one candle, two candle. When this candle closes, if you trade within 15 minutes or even half an hour, you would have gotten this movement up here. So we, we trade the 15 minutes, we open up a, a 10, 15 minute um, position. Oops. Perfect. Within this candle, you hit the jackpot. You made the money. So that is an example of how this trade strategy works. And again, coming back to our... Um, our idea of patience, that's basically your job as a trader. You will sit here looking through these different, ooh, look at how Boeing jumped up, that's nice. Uh, you will sit here looking through graphs, putting in points, like here again, we don't even need to draw a line. 
exponential moving average of 2000 of 200 that is a moving support and resistance line here we got support this is a very clean cut uh, boom we touched support one candle two candle three candles so much opportunity to make money here you guys good luck trading out there uh, Jose last week we did not have giveaways I'm still waiting for a limp trade to give me some uh, some cheat codes and some um, some free trades for you guys hang on tight uh, the gift that you got today was a strategy that makes you money uh, I hope you were here for that. Uh, unfortunately, Peter, uh, I cannot send you the strategy. If you were here, take some screenshots. I can show it to you again. Uh, but please, you guys, uh, be on top of things and take your screenshots. So very simple. Here it is. This is the one part. So took that screenshot. Boom. This is the second part. Basically, it is a fade from a support or resistance level. The Chilean peso, you know, uh, I have not because Chile is so uh, because they're an emerging market that um, that isn't in high demand. Like we, we talked about this about a week ago. Um, the demand for emerging market currencies has evolved. There's more demand, and that's why they become a, a, an active investment instrument. Uh, the Chilean peso, compared to the Brazilian real, is just not as in demand. That's why um, I really have not put a lot of time into um, learning about it. But if you have some information, please share with us. We would love to hear. But that's it actually for today, you guys. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Yaroslav Burchenko. It's been a pleasure to be here with you guys. If you like the, today's webinar, please give me a thumbs up and come back tomorrow. Every day we have something interesting and something new and you guys will learn to make money together with me, Yaroslav Burchenko. Thank you guys. Take care and good luck trading out there.